Luca Nation, Monday episode. Hope you guys caught up on PWCC and Collectible from the weekend. We have a repeat guest, and we're kind of going along the same theme of like the lead up to the national. If you remember last year, we would did a 10 for 10 after the national. Had Golden, had Matt Turner. Uh, I mean, we had everyone on after the national 10 for 10. And this year, we want to do, do kind of like a radio station lead up to the to the national. What you should know. Uh, some events you have going on and we brought on Catherine. You guys know, Catherine, eclectic personality, positive, tons of vibes. And she's like, I'm going to interview you guys. I'm going to, I want to do kind of like I'm switching it up, switch it up. So episode 735, Lucas Tigers and bronze, Catherine Harrison from magpie. Welcome back to the Lucas Tigers and bronze show. Thank you so much. I love talking with you too. So I'm really excited for this conversation. Is, is that um, right? You like movie quotes? <laughs> That's basically what this show has become. It started with a daily uh, sports cards and plays. Now it's 80s music and movies is, is basically what we're all about. I love it. Well, I expect no less than three, hopefully Atlantic City or Jersey themed quotes throughout this conversation then. Uh, let's just set the bar. Here we go. There we um, go. M most people want to come on and plug their business, but Catherine, from day one, I think you've been like, how can I serve the community? You know, I think you left IBM, right? You were there for a long time and you're like, I love the hobby. Uh, I love what you guys are about. I how can I serve? So I I'll open it up to you. Like what's the real quick for people that don't know Magpie and what, how's that entrepreneurial journey been like for you? Oh my God, it's been a roller coaster, but Magpie is a platform that makes collecting and managing your business of collecting much easier. And it's been so fun. We've built our business by talking to different people, understanding what's hard for them and figuring out how to make it easier. So um, as you guys may remember, I came to the hobby through my dad, who was a longtime collector. And while my parents... Um, used to live in Ocean City and now live um, inland from Atlantic City. So I know the venue and I know the locale well. This is going to be my first. Is your dad the king of Marvin Gardens? <laughs> it's a movie, Andrew, but it's from the 70s. It actually there, predates me. We're almost there. There you go. Exactly. Um, you mean no. Drake Marvin's room. Yes. <laughs> Marvin's room. Marvin's garden. I would rather have his garden than his room. Marvin Gardens. It's actually a piece on uh, on Monopoly. You ever play Monopoly? Oh, it is. Yeah, you're right. It's one of the properties, isn't it? There we go. So you're familiar with it. Are you are you staying in your childhood bedroom, or are you gonna actually you know get a you know Airbnb? What? How's it gonna rock and roll? So my team is staying at Bally's. Um, nice. We didn't get our hotels too early, so we're staying at Bally's. I am staying with mom and dad. They no longer live in my childhood home. But, oh, um, okay. That's good enough. My, my mom will make me breakfast and coffee every morning, mm. which will be very helpful. So, um, Cue so Andrew inviting himself over. <laughs> mm -hmm. parents, parents actually make life easier as you get older. And like In like your 20s, you want to get out of the house as quick as possible. And then your 30s, you're like, fuck, life is hard. And it's kind of nice – for them to, to do still live in their basement. Have someone take care of you. <laughs> I mean, it's amazing, right? Like, kids Listen, have you no pay you that forward because eventually <laughs> you're going to be taking care of them again. So exactly. that's why I use the strategy of don't talk to your parents because eventually they're just going to need you to help them. And you know, I might as well just dispense with that now. Don't do anything for me. I won't do anything for you. That's it. <laughs> nice and easy. You don't have to laugh. It's kind of cringy, but you know, it is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> That's my Catherine, theory, you, you've never been the national before first time this is my first time and so um after mint i did all these inner well during mint i did all these interviews with people asking them how their show was going you know what did they how was it what were they looking for and i realized this was a great opportunity to get the inside scoop on how to prep for the national so that's what i want to talk about with you guys bring water and a battery pack water and a battery i beat that I beat that to, like a dead horse. I'm done. Luca Nation, you guys know I've talked about that way too much. That's not what you need to do. Um, national, here's well, wait, my opinion. Let's take a step back. How many have you been to? What makes for an awesome national? Wait. Let's just start there. I've been to one last year. 
I mean, I think I like you better when you were drunk, Andrew. If anybody gets that movie, I'll be very impressed. Very that's not impressed. a movie. That's just a line. That's like that's just an insult. <laughs> it's an Atlantic City movie, and it's it's said by a very very famous actor. So how many national have I been to? Uh, last year was also my first. I've been to a lot of like East Coast nationals and all those other fun things, but just wasn't something that I was going to travel to Cleveland or Chicago or you know any place else for. Um, okay. You know, looking back, I really should have because it's pretty awesome. Awesome. Okay. So we're bringing water in a battery pack. What should we we do to prepare? (laughs) Go ahead, handsome. Water in a battery pack is where I would go. We don't prepare for episodes. How would we prepare for a four to five day event? Come on. (laughs) Go to cigar night, prepare for cigar night. But that's like, uh, how do you prepare? (laughs) Don't prepare. Oh, well. Just go. Bring good vibes. Listen, m- meditate. Do yoga that morning. It depends on what you're going there for, Catherine, right? I mean, listen, the cool things about National, right? A lot of cliches. Cool things about National, you know, you'll hear no matter what card you're looking for, they'll have it there, right? So if there's some obscure card you're looking for, you know, you'll probably find, you know, something uh, there for your collection. If that's what you're doing, if you're going as a collector, you know, I ran into people last year who, you know, who were in Chicago who were, um, you know, looking for vintage cards, shopping with their dad, looking for Joe Jackson stuff, kind of stuff that you're not going to see pop up on, you know, every auction that, that pops up. Um, you know, I liked to walk around a lot last year and just see the difference between the kind of hobby participants there are at the National. And, you know, I can't tell you how it's, quote, changed because I haven't really been there, you know, that often. But I do know... Uh, I have been to very large shows. I mean, shows at like Giant Stadium, like just big shows. And it's great to see all of it represented at the National, right? You got guys who are there with memorabilia. You got guys who are there with just, you know, binders full of come fill your sets, you know, old vintage baseball, non-graded. Um, you got guys with just, you know, tables of, of you name it. But then there's also, you know, twofold differences. The guys who just have like, you know, F1 cards and soccer cards in a whole, a whole table – And then you have this whole pavilion dedicated to breaking, which just wasn't a thing many, many years ago. So, I mean, that in and of itself, it's almost like, for me, sort of like, you know, like a Disney World kind of atmosphere. You can walk around. You don't have to get on the rides if you don't want to. You don't, you know, you don't, you don't have to do anything. You just walk around and kind of like, you know, take in the sights. And you can do that for two days while you're there. So really, I mean, and business wise, right? I mean, you have a booth. If you're going to the booth, you know, your goal has to be, I would think, meet as many people as you can. And you do a good job of this. Just keep smiling. You know what I mean? Just like, you know, it, there will be times you don't want to, and it's harder to do it than others, right? But just keep smiling. Your feet are going to hurt because there's no carpet. Thank you, Mint Collective, for putting carpet. That was like the key to the entire thing. Um, your feet are going to hurt. Uh, wait, and the, mas- no- wait, and the massage chairs at the Magpie booth, obviously. I mean, if there you were didn't massage take, chairs. You didn't take advantage of that. That's not my fault. But I came back, Andrew. He regretted not going to him in collective, but when I told him there were massage chairs at your booth, forget it. He was like, I'm going next year. I'm there. He's a very big proponent. He's a very big proponent of, of massages. So you you got you got a customer right there. It is what it is. But no, I mean listen, if you're going, you know, there's no cookie cutter answer for it, right? It really just depends on, you know, what you're trying to get out of it. So what are you trying to get out of it? Do you have a list of cards that you're trying to get? How do you think like what's happening in the market? It's going to impact, uh, Andrew and I were talking about this a little bit this morning. How do you Uh-oh. think it's going to impact the show, the ambiance, the, the mood that collectors and dealers and everybody's in? Handsome. I don't want to take I mean, up all the time. What we're trying to get out of it, we um, started this podcast two years ago. And we had a vision of a thousand true fans. How can we give more than we ask for? That seems like an amazing task, but it gets harder with each day. Here's why. Our audience is growing and they demand more. So the cage right before this episode is packing up SGC submissions. Are they paid for? No, they're free. They're free for people who have bought a Tiger NFT. But Mm. our audience, though they're brilliant and really smart, they can't follow basic instructions like (laughs) three free subs per Tiger. So, for example, I don't even know if MBT has a tiger and he sent us nine cards. See, 
there's things that they're good at. There's things that they're not good at. And we, instead of sending a message, hey, MBT, that's not how it works. Um, we just say, you know what? We'll make it work for you guys. So Pretty how much. do we do it? We <laughs> aim to over deliver. Now let's take it to Cigar Night. Cigar Night is going to be Wednesday night, right? Before the event starts, <laughs> like the official national starts Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we, we put together a Cigar Night thanks to Collectible Marino where I think it's going to be open bar. There's going to be entertainment and it's uh, kind of like this rooftop venue overlooking the ocean. Amazing. It's amazing. The people are yeah. going to go. They're going to have an amazing time. It takes a lot of preparation. So this month of July, it feels like it's July 46th. It's <laughs> July 11th. So how are we? <laughs> Candid, Dude. honest from the heart. You're right. But here's the thing, right? So we are a podcast. And yeah, that's a business. And Andrew's working, you know, probably 27, 28 hours a day to do consignments and SGC subs and whatnot shows and an episode and all this crazy stuff. But imagine like what some of these businesses have to go through this month. This month is tough. This month, packing up a whole booth, bringing all the cards there, you know, bringing all the people you got there, you know, setting up a booth and all that other craziness. I mean, it, you know, Andrew's right. I mean, the lead up to this, especially that cigar event, which is not, you know, it's our event. We, we promised this for our NFT holders. And, you know, we're lucky to have partners like Collectible who are you know, throwing, you know, this, this event with a whole bunch of other, you know, a whole bunch of other hobby people um, and, uh, you know, and provide some real value for our NFT holders. But, yeah, it's a little bit of a pain, you know what I mean, which is good. Because I'd rather have that pain than not have that pain. But I can only imagine what some of these, you know, some of these businesses are doing this month it's you know mm -hmm. kind of like five hour flight from california to I philly a two hour drive. drive to atlantic city setting up and then remember you have to put on a smile right this is a reality you get you get <laughs> you get the real shit from lucas tigers and bronze you gotta smile and put on a smile for four days right so it's um it depends who you are there's different participants in the hobby people i met in chicago were not smiling I mean, I have that effect on people, right? Andrew, you know this. I woke up to certain boots and people were not happy to see me, I guess. No? Call them out, dude. I'm thinking for us to really grow a subscriber base, we should just flip it and become a call-out show. Those shows crush it. I mean, I don't – the hobby is calling itself out. We, they don't need us to oh, call man. it out, right? And that's part of what Catherine's question was. Like, you know, the, the tone and tenor of the hobby. I mean, last year it was, it was jubilant. Last year, it was like, you know, Hard everybody was there on a high, right? I mean, everybody was flush with cash. Everybody was spending more money than they even knew what to do with. This year, everybody's over leveraged and looking for loans. You know what I mean? It's, you know, it's, it's card cash and it's all kinds of craziness. And it's, you know. How the turntables have turned, huh? So I got to tell you, I, what I'm curious about, I will take some time to walk the show and just observe. And what I'll be looking for is... Are there people pulling up with their Zion cases? Not cases full of Zion, the Zion case, right, or any other Zion brand cases. case, right? Yeah. And are they putting stuff on the tables? How many dealers have signs, we are buying and trading? And then mm. how many of them actually mean it? Because yeah. everyone will have a sign, but people will look at the case and be like, yeah, that, 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 I'm not interested in that stuff. That's not what I'm interested in doing. You know, maybe one, but I'd be curious to see how that works. And then what's the response of, those people with those cases because last year and at, at shows last year that I went to, not just the national, there was a lot more case on the table, a stack of it came out and the dealer was buying it and then immediately putting it, repricing it, putting it in their showcase to move during that show. Right. Right. As the year progressed and even into this year, I heard a lot more at shows of, yeah, I'll take a look at what you got, but we're not really, you know, looking for that kind of stuff. Now, last year, those kids, I'm going to say kids because I'm just going to overgeneralize here, but the, the younger folks, the newer entrants into the hobby who were walking around with those cases, they now had a case that was semi-empty and a pocket that was semi-full. Oh, and they so were able bad. to walk around and exactly use it somewhere else, maybe pay for a massage. They were free. So little <laughs> did they know. Bargains everywhere. Still, still so, got a tip. Yeah, I mean, you got a tip. Exactly. Um, <laughs> So, you know, and, and maybe they took them over to the Breakers Pavilion and they broke whack. So, we're, you know, I mean, so I'm curious to see whether or not that still happens. I imagine it probably will because people are smart. You know, people know that, you know, what to bring. They know what people are looking for. They also know that 
the market has changed a little bit. And I think what we've seen, Andrew has seen this also, is that you know people have already started to sell some of their stuff in advance of the national, whether it's mm. through PWCC's weekly auction or on eBay or any other you know way to do it. So I think the cash to spend will be there because this is kind of like, you know, look, you find a way, even if, you know, you're not making the money you used to make, you find a way to take the kids on vacation. You know, right. maybe it's not Disney World. Maybe it's Atlantic City. Maybe <laughs> it's Ocean City. You know, maybe it's who knows where. You're taking the kids to the beach or whatever it is. But you find that money to go on vacation. It's the same way with the hobby. People will find a way to, you know, redo their collection, sell some stuff, and have some spending money at the National. So I really like this. So I heard a couple things from that. So you got to make sure you know, like, why you're showing up. Are you showing up to, like, make meet people, make deals, meet your fans, meet your partners, make some friends? You know, what is your goal? <laughs> if you, you asked know? us this last year, I was going to meet Andrew for the first time. No way. Yeah, that, that, was much, it. that was much more exciting. This year, <laughs> I'm just going to kind of, you know uh, – run Instagram stories, the haves versus the have nots, right? <laughs> the no, haves not. need to stomp on the have nots, you know? Uh, Top shot users, ha, 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 we told you, you suck. Base card <laughs> buyers, idiots, you should buy gold LeBron James's from 2004. That's the only card that's going to be valuable. So a little bit of that, too. I'm really excited for it. I mean, I can't wait for your story. People making fun of the NFTs. No funds today. Yep. <laughs> No, I mean I could see it now, Andrew. You're gonna you're gonna kill it with those stories. It's gonna be a lot of fun. All right, what else, Kathy? You heard a so couple of things happened. when I cut you off. No, no, no. So that happens. You've got to have a plan. We've obviously got our watery and battery pack. Then you've got to think. Then you've got to be ready for like whatever serendipity might show up in terms of like amazing tables, people, like the events. love of my life. I'm, the love I, of your life, Andrew, might just be waiting for you. Who knew? I'm hoping for that. Like it may actually that may come to fruition in Atlantic so, City. Women of the hobby is going to have an incredible oh, yeah. or, or there are, you know, whatever your preferences are, whatever makes you happy, Andrew. But you know, there is an incredible women of the hobby. Women, women plural, women. right? Not women of the hobby. Women of the hobby. <laughs> That's the preference. <laughs> Indeed. So open mind for all sorts of serendipity that might happen. Also, Warren Buffett always talks about the time to buy is in the down market. Not when not when things are flying high. It's when people are looking to get some cash ready to move. Like this seems to me like a pretty exciting opportunity to kind of see what what might be there in the market that people have been trying to add to their personal collections or add to their inventory. So I don't know. That's kind of my take on it. You know, oh, Wacky Warren with that quote that gets, you know, quoted all the time about, you know, you should be greedy when others are fearful and fearful when others are greedy. Yep. The part that was always left out in that was what he was being greedy with. And that's an important part, right? Because I would venture to say that if Wacky Warren was part of the hobby, he wouldn't be being greedy with 2019 prison base cards right now. So, you know, we could be greedy when others are fearful, but, you know, be smart about what you're being greedy about. I'm sure Wacky Warren would tell you that. So what are you guys going to be greedy about at the National? Cigars. I'm going to be smoking <laughs> my butt off. No, I mean, you know, listen, it's a great question. I got to tell you, amazingly, over the last couple of months, Andrew here has become a buyer. And way more of a buyer and participant in the hobby than, than I have from a, from a volume perspective. And, you know, in doing that, he's really got his finger on the pulse of what moves, what you can buy, what you could pick up bargain wise, what you can, you know, purchase and then resell uh, if that's what you're looking to do. I've started buying also in like kind of like a different tier of, you know, of purchases like long term hold type of stuff. But I would bet you that there's room for both at the National. Andrew, what would you be looking for if you were on your, let's say, your end of the spectrum, right? The, thought, the thing that came to my mind, I don't know if this will come off right, like greedy with your time. Because right now, it's, uh, dude, it's just harder. It's just so much harder. And it, I think you're going to have to, to find deals, you have to spend a lot of time digging. And if you're not, if you don't have a structure to how you're going about your day, you're not going to be able to find anything. Right. So like, I, I think greedy with your time in, in this, in this period so that 
because Cage, I mean, the PWCC weekly auctions, which you're referencing, that I really do spend seven to ten hours a week looking through those. So let me ask you a question, and it's going to be a hot take. Go ahead and get ready to clip this and the whole nine yards. But Andrew, I think you're probably going to agree with me on this, and people are going to hate us both for it. But I, I don't care. I think the national is not about buying cards, especially not in that world. And and here's what I mean by that. Recently, especially in this. I don't want to call it a downturn. I don't want to call it a correction, but in the current state of the market, when I go to a card show, even a large card show, right? Even like the East coast national, whatever it is, I walk around, I look at what's in the showcase. I ask people what their prices are. I, I, you know, I, I inquire about things and I always leave saying the exact same thing. I'm going to go on PWCC's auction and I'm going to buy what I want and get it for less than what these people were all asking, even after I negotiate and do all that fun stuff. And the Nationals is a different story, right? Because, you know, you'd like to think there's deals to be made there, and I'm sure there are. But with the market the way that it is, the National, the dealers at the National, they have a little competition because, I mean, Andrew said he spends seven hours. He's talking about how much he dedicates time and preps and you name it. But the reason why he could spend seven hours on those PWCC auctions is because there's so much there and it's almost a perfected yeah. marketplace, right? You know, it is going to sell for what it sells for and you can find these deals. Most likely, most of the cards he's buying are going to be sold at prices that, that, that the dealer, the consigner, doesn't want to sell it for because they got lost in the shuffle. Whereas if you walk up to a table and say, hey, how much is that Jordan Flair the guys are like, well, this is what it comp was. This is what it sold for. I'll take ten yep. percent off. I'll take twenty percent off. Where he is able to buy stuff for fifty percent off comps because within that auction, it kind of gets lost. So I'm, I am, you know, fully yes. expecting that to have an impact on people trying to sell their cards at the national because it's just so much easier to buy cards now. And if I were at a table, I'd be like, well, you know, I don't want to look up my comps because people hate that, right? But there's a reason why people do it, right? Because look, uh, uh, there's one of these in the auction. There's going to probably be that same card in the next PWCC auction. Go ahead, Andrew. Can, if I could add to that, and yeah, it's please. something that like Catherine, you and I, we've had two calls in the last week. It's uh, it's preparation. It's like knowing your numbers. You know, I'm not someone who's ever really done that, but I've realized the value. And I think where you're going to have success in the lead up to, to national is in preparation, is not in inventorying all your items isn't going the card ladder sales history and seeing what your stuff truly is worth in the last 10, 15 sales so that you don't undersell yourself so that you know the inventory you have. And I think there's, you could do some real damage in trades. If you come prepared with your inventory, how much you're into your cards for, how much recent sales for, if you have a nine, how much a recent 10 sold for, how much a recent nine, five sold for, have that all prepared so that when you go into trade night or you're, you're going into the, to make deals you're like no 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 this is what my card's worth this is how much it's sold for you're confident and you're able to get deals done i think you're the best deals are going to be made in the lead up in the preparation to national mm -hmm. and we don't talk about that enough no i think that makes a ton of sense and i think the trade component which you mentioned there having like what's your cost basis what are you looking for and being able to make good <laughs> trades that potentially don't require a ton of cash but allow you to get assets that you're looking for, whether that's to flip them or it's something that you want for the PC. Obviously, we all know that that's a huge part of the hobby, but it's not really a systematic part. And I think that, I mean, Andrew, you and I have talked about this. That's something that we see as a real opportunity. And, you know, I, um, I've i got a 15-year-old interning for me who is absolutely amazing. And this is what he does at every show. He, know, he walks in knowing exactly what he has, exactly what he wants, and exactly what it's worth. And then he goes and he trades and makes, you know, kind of in like card value, hundreds, if not thousands of dollars at some of these shows, which is pretty cool. Well, well, let's let's use a good, ex like a real life example, because we got 24 minutes, like a strategy. Wiseman. Wiseman yesterday had a huge game, right? This yeah. is a guy that people have been waiting to have for a long time, waiting to see something from. So there's right. two options. Either you want to buy into Wiseman now at National, but have your 20 cards that you want to buy of his. Have them ready and know what they're worth so that when you see them, you can pounce. Or think about dealers. They probably have hundreds of cards, right? They don't know. If it's not written down in Magpie or in an Excel spreadsheet, they don't know what Wisemans they have. They're like, oh, I think I have a Wiseman. And they open up that Zion case, put it on the floor, lay down next to it, and like are yep. ruffling through it. 
person, right. right? If this is on your phone, you go and you're like, okay, I have four advisements. Here's what they are. Boom, 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 boom. It's so easy for you to do business. And that's one example. So you have your watch list if you're trying to buy into a player and you know the cards you're trying to get into. And you have all of your stuff categorized. So if Wiseman has another huge game, like boom, I have five Wisemans. I could package them up. They're all individually worth this much, but I'll package them for 25% off. Do you have a deal? Totally. And this is something Magpie can help dealers with? They're working on it. They're building it. And, and Catherine spends tons of time talking to people like us who are on the ground floor to build a platform that's not just like theoretical, it's practical in nature. That's my sense. She, she try to make them more. No, that's great, Andrew. You, I mean, we've been working and talking to Andrew. Our, there's so much time that if you if you run your business as a dealer, you have to spend so much time in front of spreadsheets. And that's time that you're not selling. That's not the fun part of the hobby. And we're trying to make that easier. But um, this is so, okay. So we've talked a lot about the cards. We've talked a lot about the show and strategy. Let's talk about the people because I mean, that's one of the best parts and one of the most fun things that I like about the hobby. Tell me, who are you excited to see since we're going to make this a call out show? Cage. <laughs> yeah, Cage is, in, is in, in the fittest, uh, he's ever been lost 45 pounds. Oh, 44 this morning. 10,000 steps 44.4. 44.4 this morning. Yeah. Um, so I'm excited to see him put my maybe put my arms all the way around him this time. <laughs> Listen, what's funny is I'm not that different in weight than I was at last national. The thing is, I gained that 44 pounds to lose it again. It's kind of like you know the whole hibernation, getting fat in the winter thing. I think by the time national comes, I will have lost 50 pounds since April 24th. I gave myself a three month window to lose 50 pounds. I think I'll get there. Um, got another like. Uh, six pounds to go basically between now and then i'll get there if i have to cut my toenails i will you know and we'll you know we'll our community <laughs> I hope you will. no matter what's our... happening like please make that happen our community our people the people that you know listen to our show they ride with us they support us it's always cool to see like i mean i remember last year like we went to a collectible dinner we saw kevin nagandi on the walk back then we saw like Tony Harley, Heroes, um, yeah, a, t a ton of people, a Reckless. We saw these people just walking around, and these are all people like listen to our show, support us, and it was just cool. Like, just went and grabbed a beer. I think Cage had some c cigars. We went to a trade night. So, getting to see the people that you know comment and DM us and putting a face to like an Instagram name is, is pretty cool. But what do you I, think when you only know their Instagram names? I feel like I have so many. Listen, people. listen, you're that is a hundred percent right. A hundred percent right. As a matter of fact, I, I I'm gonna tell you, I last year I said who who what's your Instagram name? Like you have to not be afraid to do that. I was doing so like who am I talking to? Like I, I hate to do this, but you know, I only know you from an Instagram name. Sometimes right. it's like a picture of a tiger, which we you know we love and the whole deal. Um, but tell me who you are. Don't be mad at me for not knowing. I, you know, I apologize. And guys, please introduce yourself. Andrew, I could not have had a better answer than what he just said. And it really is. And even more so this year than last year. You know what I got this morning? I got a video from one of our listeners who is in Israel. And he sent a video walking to the Western Wall. He's walking to, you know, he's doing a <laughs> prayer. And he said a prayer. At this wall in Jerusalem for me, my kids, my That's wife, amazing. Andrew. You know, I mean, like, wh whether you believe it, don't believe it, you know, it, it obviously is an important thing for him. He's making a pilgrimage. And, I mean, think about that for a second. Like, that, we, we joke about it, right? But there – I call myself an idiot. We're kind of two idiots, and we're just talking sports cars, and we get to talk to people like you, and that's, you know, one of the highlights, right? But there are people who listen to us every day. People, you know, people who, ha they like the movie quotes. Some of them don't. Andrew doesn't. It's okay. It is what it is. But, but I mean, we get the best messages. We get people who really, you know, they tune in. If we don't have an episode up by like 10 o'clock, I start getting messages. Everything okay? You know, like, are you feeling okay? You know, like, what's going on? Stop so, asking me about episode 701. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. But so, I mean, you know, we... We've become kind of because we do this every day, and there really isn't anyone else in the hobby that does something different every single day. I mean, You're people a part are there. Of people are there. Lives. Yeah. So, I mean, what what I hate the most coming out of National last year was the messages that I got for people saying, "Hey, Kate, I saw you. 
but you were in the middle of talking to somebody else. And I didn't want to interrupt you. Hey, I, I saw you. You were trading. I saw you were doing this, and I didn't get a chance to meet you. I, if 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 I could plan out a perfect national, it would be to not get a single message like that. So guys, be rude. You know, come up and tap me on the shoulder. You know, hit me in the head. I don't care. I want to make sure that if you want to say hi, we, we you know we've spoken or not. If there's anything yeah. we can do to help you, any question we can answer, please make sure I'm there the whole damn time. I'm even coming an extra like two days than I did in Chicago. So, you know, we should find find the minute because I'm going to have cards and cigars for everybody. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Okay. I love it. I love it. All right. Last question for me. Um, what I've is, enjoyed this, what? by the way. You're good at this. Oh, well, thanks for answering my questions. It's fun to ask them. Do something uh, what am I not asking? What is like the kernel of super secret national Ooh. wisdom that we have not touched on yet? Clearly, water and battery. <laughs> is that it, Andrew? Is that is that the national wisdom? Oh man. Handsome, you got one? Go see the memorabilia. Eric Myers gave me that advice. That was probably my favorite part. Like get there early. I do. I, I, I've said that a few times. Get there early. I think you should get there on Wednesday night because Wednesday night, I do think that they open it up for dealers, but maybe to the general public and it's not as crowded and you could actually walk through and see this stuff. But Eric Myers told me, go look at the memorabilia. And there was this one section. It was like Bill Russell's MVP trophy and his jersey game worn and uh I, I, the, the memorabilia, the stuff that like you don't really see anywhere else and you really can't like – a card, okay, you could see a high-definition card on PWCC Grid. But, like, memorabilia, you really do want to see that in real life. Uh, so that was really cool. Uh, Jordan's game-worn shoes. Um, I, I would say that. Like, get there early and check out – and just do a walk around, or like kind of like through a museum, and check out the stuff that you would normally not see anywhere else. I love that. That's awesome. I'm definitely going to do mean- that. And Andrew did some great lives with that last year. You know, checking out, oh, look at this, look at that. I'm pretty sure yeah. Steve Young's rookie jersey. Somebody's going to have that out there. Um, yeah, it's going to be some good stuff. I mean, listen, it depends who is who is asking, right? So people are crapping on Atlantic City for the national thing. I'll take it a different a different way. But the boardwalk's kind of cool. You know, yeah. before, you know, before, you know, while sundown, whatever it is, you know, take a walk on the boardwalk, you know, check it out. Um, if you do partake in the Atlantic City tradition of saltwater taffy, if you have fillings, that. just be careful. You know what I mean? Like, it will take your filling right out of your tooth. So, Indeed. you know, be careful Indeed. about that, right? Um, there's a pretty cool Ferris wheel, right, at the Steel Pier, right? I mean, that's pretty cool. Um, I'm staying at the Tropicana. Everybody who wants to stalk me, come on there. I love the quarter. Got a cool Cuban place in there. You got some really good restaurants and stuff in the quarter and the trop. Um, you can do some shopping if you want to take a little bit of a break, right? I think there's outlets right off the boardwalk. What do you call my Tanger outlets? To, like, yeah, or, there's I think great they, outlets. There's good shopping there also. So, I mean, it's different. It's a different way of doing it. Obviously, everybody's national, the whole deal. But you could take a break if you're there five days, you know, and you want to go. There's some good shopping. Um, also, you know, for- the Jersey Shore is beautiful. Like, seriously. I mean, I'm a Jersey girl, and I had my bachelorette party in Atlantic City. But, like, Jersey Shore is gorgeous. It is no longer the, like, dirty shore of the 70s and 80s. Beautiful big white beaches. It's a nice beach, and there's plenty of stuff to do. And you can gamble too. I I've been told, which is you know pretty cool as well. But I mean, look, you know, it is what it is. As far as the national itself, um, I gotta tell you, the national is becoming a little more content friendly. I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to like the people who have booths, collectible as a booth, whatnot's gonna have booths. I'm I'm looking forward to just you know people people doing that stuff. And here's why: Andrew was a damn hobby celebrity that nobody knows about. And people should be having this handsome individual on their shows. Because now, sure. this year, not only can you talk about putting out content and what it takes to do a hobby business, but what to buy, what to sell, how to buy it, how to do consignments, how to do grading, how to crack and sub. You know, while everybody else is complaining about how the hobby has taken a downturn and people like Andrew who came in because they were Gary Vites or they were sneakerheads or they were people like that, people who, who came in the hobby, they're now leaving because the going's gotten tough. This dude has completely elevated his game and said, all right, if it's going to get harder, I'm going to figure out new ways to do this. I'm not just going to sit back and, and, and do the old stuff. I'm going to figure out new ways to make sure I'm still having fun and making money in the hobby. 
So I can't wait for people to be interviewing this dude. Maybe he'll bring me along and I can ride his coattails. <laughs> I'm being serious, I love- dude. I couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> Barstool is going to be Barstool's in town on June, July 29th too. I think they're doing a comedy special at the Anchor Club, not to like at the Anchor Rock Club. So okay. side note, we'll go, we'll go. I love it. So it's the National. I'm going to practice that T is capitalized, almost like the Ohio State University. Mm-hmm. And yes, um, Juan and Soto think- plays for the Nationals. <laughs> so very different. Very different. This is very the National. different. The I think the serendipitous bump into each other is actually like the stuff that's like unscripted and unprepared is, is the coolest, right? Because hmm. you think about it, it's a lot of people come in, come into town. Like I, I saw posts with the German collectors, so there's gonna be like 30, 40 of them. You just wow. you yeah. see each other all the time, and we know what we look like. Like we know what a hobbyist looks like. You could spot him from a mile away. Yep, he collects cards. So like just stopping and be like, oh, like. Who are you? Oh, you're this guy. Remember we made a deal like four years ago, like that serendipity. You can't really plan for it, but it happens more than you think when you get a lot of people in a concentrated area. One other little additional thing of what I'd like to look forward to. I don't know when he's doing it, right? But the the kind of things that happen at National because it's part of the show. um, You know, you can go online and watch people break National Treasures of Flawless all the time. Sometimes you can even watch a a rapper do it, you know, uh, with, you know, with, with various people, right? But... Uh, Leighton Sheldon vintage breaks. No, we don't have any. He, he's course. not paying me to say this, but you know, a couple years ago he broke. Uh, what was it like? I think it was fifty-five Bowman, the ones with the television. You know, wow. Mantle came out of the pack. I think this year he might be doing a fifty-one Bowman pack, um, and he's cracking the pack out of like a case, and he's going to open the pack up. And those are the kind of things that, like, you know, all right, I'm sure the current makeup of the hobby would rather see a flawless case opened. <laughs> Or National Treasures basketball opened instead of one of these packs, but that's the kind of thing that doesn't happen. You know, every minute, every day. You know, you can't see that, and they do it live. So, I'm gonna have to find out when that is, and make sure I'm in attendance to watch that because that's cool stuff. Yeah, that's really cool. I love just the diversity that there's going to be. I mean, all of the different like nooks and crannies of the hobby are going to be in one place, which you certainly can't try and do on the internet. You would, your brain would just go completely insane. So um, that's really cool. That's, that's a very good nugget. Well, thank you guys. This is awesome. I really appreciate it. Um, I've got now a list of things to help me get prepped and um, I can't wait to see you guys and hopefully um, smoke some cigars and have some fun and talk to some strangers. You, Woo! you got it. You got it. I awesome. will save you a cigar. Thank Magpie you. Dot app. Uh, Magpie-app.com. Is that right? Yeah, or yourmagpie.com is the best one. Yourmagpie.com. Check it out. Uh, reach out to Catherine, honestly. She's uh, – DM me, your.magpie yeah. on Instagram. And don't be scared when you see her. She's not going to be trying to steal your shiny things. Not you know? at all. I just want to ask you questions. That's literally all I want to do all day. So. <laughs> Love it, Luke and Asia. What, what – what, Cut it here. We usually do a little episode after, but um, Monday, that does that's good. You could catch me on whatnot later today or tomorrow when you guys listen to this. Love you, Luca Nation. Catherine, you're a Jersey person. Where will Kevin Indeed. Durant be playing when the when the season opens? Oh. He's taking his talents to Lucas Tigers and Bronze. <laughs> Win more championships. You're gonna be a threesome. I can see it. Here we go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, you think he stays in Brooklyn? I mean, he might get traded during the season. You think he's going to open up in Brooklyn? You think he's going to get traded somewhere else? You think he goes to Golden State, Lakers, goes back to OKC? Where do you think? I think he's out of New York for sure. I don't think he's Ooh, staying. Ooh, well, that's enough of an answer. I have a feeling he's going to be right where he is right now. And we're gonna well, see. he should give me a call and ask me how difficult moving is. He's not going <laughs> to want to move. <laughs> Thank you very much. We'll see you at The National. So thank you all for listening to another episode of Lucas, Tigers, and Bronze Oh My. I wanted to tell you about a new service that we have starting as of today, and I'm really, really excited to bring it to you guys. So as a part of our partnership with SGC, we got 50 free submissions every single month, and many of you have taken advantage of that. And it's amazing that we could have the opportunity to 650 episodes, 675 episodes in, to go ahead and give back to our community. As people were sending those cards in, they asked, can we send five, 10, 20 more cards to you guys? We'll pay for it, but we wanted them graded with SGC. 
you guys know SGC is turning cards around in 13 to 14 business days, uh, have incredible customer service, and their secondary market values are going up day after day after day. And that's exciting for the hobby and exciting for the grading landscape. So we didn't want to just rush into it. We wanted to do it right. And what we did was I relocated here to Boca Raton, Florida. I opened up a P.O. box maybe five minutes away from SGC. And I will be hand delivering and hand picking up the cards. So you don't have to worry about anyone else touching your cards. It will be me. And I will update you every step of the way. So here's how it's going to work. I'm going to personally pick up the cards from a P.O. box, prep them, new card saver, new penny sleeve, and deliver them to SGC every single Tuesday. Why Tuesday? Well, it lets the stragglers over the weekend come back through on Monday and gives me a day to prep. And it basically gives SGC the entire week to work on grading those cards. Once your cards pop, only then at the end of the process will you be paying for the service. It's $25 per card. Simple as that. And the turnaround times have never been faster. We're hearing right now 13, 14, less than 20 business days. So there it is. 9170 Glades Road, number 135 is the P.O. Box in Boca Raton, Florida, 33434. 9170 Glades Road, number 135, Boca Raton, Florida, 33434. Of course, you could shoot me an email or shoot me a text anytime, and I'm always available. Many of you already have my email. It's Goldberg at gmail.com or my cell phone number, 215-519-9154. Reach out with any questions. I could walk you through the process. I've hopped on the call with quite a few of you, and I'm happy to do that. Love you, Luca Nation.